Good morning. Today we are going to discuss the superconductivity. Superconductivity has been an absorbing field since its discovery by Kamerling Owens in 1911. The superconducting state of a solid offers no resistance to the passage of electricity and also repels a magnet. Hence, this field has not only been a favorite ground for a scientist but also immense interest to the engineers and technologists because of variety of applications. The discovery of superconductivity was an unpredicted cause of two basic ideas in thermal physics and of the progress in producing low temperatures. The first idea proposed by Lord Kelvin in 1848 in that there is an absolute zero of temperature that is a limit to coldness. He afterwards showed that this zero is the same as the neutral zero of temperature or curing in the ideal gas equation of the state. PV is equal to nRT. The scale of temperature starting at absolute zero is known as Kelvin. The second idea <coughs> due to Von Rawls in 1873 helps to locate several milestones along the road to absolute zero. K. Wons pursued the idea of absolute zero temperature throughout his life. His one of the main goals was to liquefy helium. After many attempts, he liquefied helium at the record low temperature of 4.2 Kelvin at atmospheric pressure. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1913 for investigation of the properties of matter at low temperature. Thus, superconductor may be defined as a substance that has no electrical resistance below a certain characteristic temperature, Tc, called the critical temperature. Discovery and early history of the superconductor is studied here. Superconductivity has fascinated scientists since its discovery by K. Owens in 1911. He holds the first to liquefy helium. He holds the first scientist to measure properties of substance at such low temperatures. He wanted to investigate the behavior of electrical resistance at liquid helium temperature. He discovered that metals such as mercury, lead, tin and indium become superconductors at temperature near absolute zero. Later, Mishner and Oceanfield found that some superconducting materials will not allow a magnetic field to penetrate their bulk. In other words, a superconductor completely excludes an external magnetic field. This is now called the Mishner effect. 
the finding of Mishner and Oceanfield watch that the superconductor is not only a perfect conductor but it is also a perfect diamagnet. By 1975, superconductivity has been observed at 23 Kelvin in NB3GE compound. In 1986, Bednarz and Muller found that LA2CuO4 in which lanthanum is partially replaced by barium shows superconductivity around 30 Kelvin. In early 1987, several groups of scientists reported that compounds of the type YBA2CuO7 become superconducting above the easily accessible liquid nitrogen temperature 77 Kelvin. These discoveries produced research on high temperature superconductors. Superconductivity can claim an immense and interesting future. Properties of superconductor The most easily measured property of a superconductor is the absence of electric resistance. Surely no measurement can show that the resistance of a substance is absolutely zero. Electrical resistance of a substance is related to the temperature to which the substance is heated or cooled. There is a temperature below which a normal conductor passes into a state of semiconductor. This temperature is the critical temperature or transition temperature Tc. Below transition temperature Tc, the substance is a superconductor and about Tc transition temperature or critical temperature the substance is a normal conductor so the condition for a substance to show superconductivity is that it should be at temperature below critical temperature Tc superconductivity is also related to externally applied magnetic field a superconductor shows interesting magnetic properties. There is certain applied magnetic field at which a superconductivity is lost and the substance becomes a normal conductor. The externally applied magnetic field which is necessary to destroy the superconductivity and destroy and restore the normal resistivity is called the critical magnetic field HC. Superconductors may be divided into two types type 1 and type 2 depending upon the way in which the transition from the superconducting state to normal state proceeds when the external magnetic field is applied. In type first, superconductors, there is only one value of Hc. As the externally applied magnetic field is increased and it reaches the value of Hc, the superconductivity is lost and the substance returns to its original state and at the same time it becomes diamagnetic. 
in type second superconductors there are two critical fields lower critical field hc1 and upper critical field hc2 in the superconductors the transition from superconducting state to the normal state does not takes place in one step but it takes place in a gradual manner type second superconductors are characterized by lower critical magnetic field hc at which magnetic flux begins to enter the superconductors and an upper critical magnetic field hc2 at which the magnetic flux fully enter the superconductor and the superconductivity of the material is lost thus there is a range of the magnetic field below hc1 there is no penetration at and above and above hc2 there is a full penetration and in between hc1 and hc2 there is a partial penetration of magnetic flux in the superconductor throughout this transition till hc2 is reach in the resistance of the material is zero in addition to the above properties thermodynamics and optical properties of superconductor have also been studied the thermodynamic properties of a superconductor such as specific heat can be measured directly as far as optical property are uh, properties are concerned it has been found that superconductors are more reflecting the normal metals